Hello and welcome to Tech Deals, Cooler Masters Hyper 212 Evo 120mm CPU cooler. Who should buy this, who should not buy it, and what CPU should you install it on? That's what we're going to cover in this video. CPU cooling can be a complex subject. There are hundreds of different choices for cooling your processor in your computer, and this is just one of them. But I'm going to talk about the pros and cons and who should consider an aftermarket solution and then why this might be a good choice for you. First of all, Custom built versus pre built. If you have a pre built computer from a major computer company such as Dell, HP, Lenovo, Acer, etc., this video is not for you. Your computer comes with the cooling that it needs. It, there's no benefit or reason to mess with it. You don't need to buy something like this. Use your computer as it comes. Now, if your cooling solution has failed, you may very well need to go back to your original manufacturer and get a solution that matches because many of those computers come with custom, custom cooling solutions. Not all of them, but many of them do. Now that brings us to custom built computers. Now you either have a custom built machine that you want to upgrade or you're building a new machine. Is it worth buying something like the Hyper 212 Evo? Well, that depends upon what CPU you want to install. AMD, Intel, both provide stock CPU fans and coolers with most, but not all, of their processors. At the default speeds that they come with, they work just fine. You don't need to replace it for stock speeds. Let me give you an example. This is the Intel i5-6500 CPU. This is a 6th generation, 4-core, four 4-thread four processor. It runs at a base clock speed of 3.2 gigahertz and it turbos to 3.6 gigahertz. It is a great value for about $200 and I have done numerous reviews and game testing on this processor. Now this comes with this Intel stock cooler at no charge included in the box. So if you pay $200 for this you get the CPU and you get the cooler. Many people ask the question, well should they spend the $30 that the Hyper 212 costs to get better cooling? And my answer is, no, you should not. There is no point or benefit in doing so. You're just wasting your money. Now, somebody's bound to argue with me and say, wait a minute, the Hyper 212, it runs cooler. It'll run your CPU cooler, so it's better. First of all, yes, it will run your CPU cooler. And no, it doesn't make any difference. Specific example, I recently tested Battlefield 1 on my i5-6500 uh, computer. That CPU is installed in a standard mini tower case. Not a big fancy one, there's not a ton of fans in there. It's a basic mid mini tower case. There is one intake and one exhaust fan. There's nothing fancy about that system. That CPU is installed with the Intel stock cooler. Exactly what came in the box. When I ran Battlefield 1, the CPU was being used 100%. I ran several different test runs using different video cards so it was running at 100% for more than an hour. The temperature never broke 60 degrees Celsius. Now to you and me, 60 degrees Celsius is quite warm. I would not want to be in a 60 degree room. But to the processor that is completely normal and well within safe limits. Anything up to 80 degrees Celsius is completely normal and well within safe limits. Whether that CPU is running at 50. 60 or 70 degrees Celsius makes no difference. It won't run any faster just because you make it run cooler because it runs at 3.2, turboing to 3.6 and will go no faster. It is not an unlocked processor. You cannot change its speed beyond 3.6 gigahertz. If you own such a CPU or any of the non-overclockable Intel chips, the i3-6100, the i5-64, 65, or 6600, just use the free one, the free heat sink and fan that's included. There is no reason whatsoever to spend any money on any aftermarket cooler on any of Intel's non-overclockable chips. Now, having said overclockable, what in the world is one of those? Well, this would be a good example of that. This is an i5-6600K. The processors with the letter K at the end of them are unlocked chips that can be run faster than, than, the, than the factory shipping speed. Now this particular chip has a base clock speed of 3.5 gigahertz. It will easily run into the fours. You can overclock this to 
4.2, 4.4, some of these will easily run at 4.6 gigahertz. The faster you run the chip, the faster your CPU can process whatever it is that you're doing, be it video rendering, playing games, or anything else. It's also worth noting that the current generation of Intel K chips do not come with a heatsink and fan. Notice the thickness of the box? If you buy a K processor, you will have to buy some type of cooling solution. Please note, you can buy separately the Intel stock heatsink and fan for less than $10. And if you were going to run that i5-6600K at stock clock speeds, this would work just fine. There's no need for anything else. You can buy these for less than $10. Amazon, Newegg, eBay, they're available everywhere. However, if you want to overclock that and install it in a Z170 motherboard, it's very easy by one simple change in the motherboard by changing the multiplier of the base clock speed, for example, from 3.5, change it to 4.2, and boom, you're running at 4.2 gigahertz. Would I continue to run the stock heat sink and fan? I might. Depends upon how hard I want to push the CPU. At anything up to 4 gigahertz, I actually don't have a problem with the stock heat sink and fan. However, you generally will get more overclocking as you ramp the clock speed up by going with something like a Hyper 212 Evo. And for an i5-6600, a Hyper 212 Evo would be an excellent choice. I have no doubt that 95 plus percent of all of the i5 chips will comfortably run at 4.2 gigahertz on a Hyper 212 Evo. And if you're spending the $230 that chip costs, the $30 for the Hyper 212 Evo should not, hopefully, break the bank. Will you get to 4.4, 4.6? Some of them will, some of them won't. As you start to get to the mid fours, you may run into the limitations of a $30 cooler. That's where liquid cooling would kick in. How much do you want to spend to get maximum performance? There are liquid coolers starting around $60, going up into the low 100s, $110, $120 that you can buy. And those will certainly overclock the 6600K or the 6700K further than this will. But those coolers cost two to three times as much money. So if you would like a more economical solution for the i5-6500, the Hyper 212 Evo will provide you with a really good overclock at a modest price, low noise, good cooling, it'll work just fine. $230 CPU, $30 cooler, install it on a reasonably priced Z170 board, and you've got yourself a very nice gaming machine. Now, I briefly mentioned the i7 CPU. Now, the i7 comes in two versions, the i7-6700 and the i7-6700K. Now, the 6700 comes in this box and comes with a stock cooler. It is not overclockable and runs a little bit slower than the K version does. If you don't plan to overclock your CPU, I would buy the i7-6700 and then use the stock cooler that comes with it. The CPU itself is $30 less and you get a free cooler saving yourself some money. If you buy the K version and then buy a Hyper 212 Evo, you're spending $60 more for a relatively modest 300 megahertz clock speed difference in turbo mode between the two chips, which you really won't notice in most circumstances. What about overclocking? Now, if you're going to buy an i7-6700K, would I recommend this? Not really. You could. Here's the problem. An i7-6700K is a $330 CPU. By the time you're spending that much on a CPU, the rest of your system is probably pretty nice as well. If you're going to do that, you want to overclock it more than a bit. The 6700K is already a 4.2 gigahertz processor. It will go to 4.6 easily on liquid cooling and many people get 4.8 out of it. But you're going to have to spend around $100 on say a Corsair H100 or H110 240 millimeter liquid cooler to get those type of clock speeds at a reasonable temperature. But if you want maximum performance, that's what I would recommend. 
So in short, for Intel processors, i5, 6600K, I think the Hyper 212 Evo is an excellent choice. A reasonably priced CPU, a reasonably priced cooler, overclock it to 4.2 gigahertz. You may not even have to change the voltage. It may run fine as is. If you have to upgrade the voltage at all, it won't be much, maybe a tenth of a volt, not that much. What about AMD? This is an AMD Athlon X64 860K Black Edition CPU. Yes, that's a heck of a product name, is it not? What is this? This is a $65 processor from AMD, and it presents good value. I'm in the middle of doing a system build on this, which will be published soon. Four processing cores, base clock speed of 3.7 gigahertz, turboing to 4.0 gigahertz. But it's unlocked, which means it can be clocked faster. Now, this is an important point. Intel's least expensive processor that can be overclocked is the $230 i5-6600K. $230 versus $65. Now, wait a minute, you say. 3.7 gigahertz? 3.5, 200, there seems to be a mismatch. Yes, there is. Clock speed doesn't mean anything unless you're comparing similar chips. You cannot compare the number of cores and the clock speed between AMD and Intel because they're completely different designs. This chip is much closer in performance to the i3-6100 than it is to anything with the i5 label on it. And that's an important, there's a reason why it's sold at the $65 price point. It belongs down there. Now, you can overclock this chip. You probably won't get to five gigahertz, but you can probably get to 4.5, maybe even 4.7. If you install something like the Hyper 212 Evo, you will get more performance out of it. But let's be clear about something. If you overclock this to 4.4, gigahertz. That is a 10% overclock from the 4.0 that it will run at in its base turbo mode. $30 is 50% of the price of the CPU. You're spending 50% of your CPU's price on your cooling solution. Remember, this comes with a cooler in the box to get a 10% performance boost. 50%, 10%. How is that a deal again? It doesn't strike me as a deal. Let me give you a different approach. If you have $30 to spend over the price of this CPU, just buy a faster CPU. Put that money into a faster chip. What would I buy? Frankly, I hate to say this, nothing from AMD. I would buy the Intel i3-6100. Why? Now the i3-6100 is a two-core chip at 3.7 gigahertz, and it is clock-locked. You cannot overclock that chip. But in most cases, not all there are exceptions, but in most cases, it's faster than that. Intel's cores are better than AMD's cores. Now this may change next year with Zen. I'm talking about current generation processors. This, the future is always subject to change. But AMD's current processors on a per-core basis are slower than Intel's. The Intel i3-6100 with two cores will generally beat a four-core Athlon X4 at 3.7 gigahertz with four cores because it just, it, the cores are weaker. This is why you cannot compare core counts and clock speed between chips. And here's another benefit. The i3-6100 uses half of the electricity of the AMD Athlon X64. And it comes with a stock cooler, which is absolutely fine. There's no reason to use anything else. So half the power consumption, and in many cases, even better performance. So if you're buying a $65 processor, and then you put a $30 cooler on it, just buy a faster CPU, in my opinion. So the long and short of it is, in my personal opinion, there's actually only one CPU that the Hyper 212 Evo belongs on and that is the i5-6600K. Now, I could have said that at the beginning of this video. I realize that's a lot of words to get to this point, but an opinion or a viewpoint without a rationalization behind it or reasoning behind it doesn't mean much. It's one thing for me to say, here's the Hyper 212 Evo, it's great, it's $30, put it on this CPU and nothing else, and then of course you go, well, why? What about all these other choices? That's why I had this entire conversation was to get to that point. The clock-locked Intel chips don't need it. 
the AMD chip isn't worth having it put on. Now there is one line of AMD chips I haven't talked about, and that is the FX series of chips. I am filming this in November of 2016. There might have been an argument in the past to install a Hyper 212 Evo on an FX chip in the past. If you are upgrading your machine, don't buy an AMD FX processor today. Either buy an Intel chip, either buy, if you're on a budget, the Athlon X64, which for its price is a good deal, or wait for AMD's new Zen processor. Now, it may not be called Zen when it releases. That's kind of the code working name it's on. It should be out sometime in the next three to four months. It is a completely new design and a completely new architecture for AMD. And honestly, I have high hopes for it. I would love to see some good competition for Intel. But as far as the current generation AMD FX chips are concerned, they're no longer worth buying. Their performance does not justify their price, their heat output, their power consumption, and the motherboards they're installed on are going to be obsolete very soon because none of the new stuff coming out next year will work on them. I know some people aren't going to like that answer, but that's my opinion in November of 2016. So I hope that whole explanation was helpful. Now I'll open this up and show you the size comparison next to the Intel stock cooler so you can see what you're getting for the money. At some point, I will put this onto something. I will do an install video showing this being installed. It's fairly straightforward. It's not overly complicated. There'll be instructions, but I'll, I, will, I will put it in something. Oh, there we go. Tour the box. Take a look at the size of this thing. That's a 120 millimeter fan. That is a heck of a cooler. Compare that to the Intel stock cooler. It's not even close. That is a massive, massive difference. Now, let me be clear. The Intel stock cooler, and the AMD generally works the same way. I don't have one up here. Um, the fan is on the top and blows straight down. And on the bottom, there's a very small contact pad which actually rests on the CPU itself. There's pre-applied thermal paste and it just sits on the CPU like that. It's low profile, it's very quiet, and it does the job. This thing is huge. Now on the bottom is the actual contact plate. These, and there's a sticker there. Don't peel this off before actually installing it, but make sure you take the sticker off. I'll do all this when I actually install this in something, but take that off before you put it on your CPU. Now, you will have to apply thermal paste there, and it should, it'll be in here, I'll open that in a second. Um, there are four copper heat pipes here that will connect to your CPU. This is gonna provide far superior cooling to the stock one. But as I mentioned before, for the clock clock chips, it doesn't make any difference. For overclockable chips, for ramping up into the four gigahertz, four, four and a half gigahertz range, that's where that's gonna come in handy. These are four big copper heat pipes running up through this aluminum. Look how big that is, that thing is monster. Furthermore, that fan, that looks like it produces a lot of airflow. At some point when I put this in a build, um, I'll definitely do some tests. I'll, maybe I'll run Battlefield 1. I don't think I'll put it on the i5 just because I've got a liquid cooler set up for that, but I'll put it on something and give you some type of temperature comparison. Here is the plug that goes into the motherboard. What else comes in here? There is, here we go, installation plate. This is stuck on the bottom. This helps you install it onto the motherboard. And then in this box, oh boy, lots of parts. There is a fold-out instruction manual with pictures to help you install it. Warranty information. Two-year limited hardware warranty. Fair enough. It's a block of metal and a fan. Go figure. Inside this kit, and I don't know how well you can see this, but there are a variety of installation parts. Keep in mind that this is designed for both AMD and Intel CPUs and will work on many different sockets. So they provide more hardware than you will use on any one installation. You won't use all of these posts and screws and mounts. Now, one thing they do provide in here is thermal paste, which is actually nice. They provide a tube of it. Let me open this up and show you. There we go. 
This is a tube of thermal paste. You will not use all of this when you install it. You'll just use a daub of it. That's actually really nice. What this means is that um, you can install it multiple times. When you install this, you're only going to put a, a small uh, drop onto the actual CPU itself. If you use all of this, you're going to break something. If you ever remove a cooler, you need to completely clean the top of the CPU and clean the contact pad on the cooler and then reapply fresh thermal paste. Never try and reuse thermal paste. Once it's been contacted and removed, it's not likely to ever quite go back together the same. You'll introduce air bubbles, you'll reduce the cooling performance. So it's nice that they provide this. I actually like that. And then there is a whole collection of mounts and posts, which you will not use all of, but you'll use some of depending upon which CPU you install this in. Well, that's the Hyper 212 Evo. I hope this video was helpful to you. Like this video if you like it. Don't if you don't. Remember to subscribe to my channel with the big huge red button right down there. Questions and comments will be in the comment section below. And as always, check out my video description below. I will have a link to Amazon and Newegg for the Hyper 212 Evo. By all means, buy it wherever it costs the least. I will also have links to all these CPUs that I've mentioned to both Amazon and Newegg down there. Thank you very much for watching. I will see you in the next video.